Welcome to the video on the CRAP method for evaluating sources. As you do research, it is important to be able to evaluate the credibility and reliability of the sources you use. The CRAP method is a simple yet effective way to evaluate the credibility of a source. The acronym stands for Currency, Relevance, Authority, Accuracy, and Purpose. Let's break down each component of the CRAP method. When researching, one of the first concepts to consider is currency, which refers to when the information was published and if that publication date meets your information needs. Let's look at a couple of examples together. If your research topic was the Canadian government's response to the COVID pandemic, you would want sources published after January 2020, as this is when the first cases of COVID began to be reported in Canada. Anything published prior would not be relevant since the topic you were discussing did not occur until after January 2020. Alternatively, let's say you are researching the 1918 pandemic and the Canadian response to this event. In this example, since the event was over 100 years ago, sources could be more than a few years old. You may find many valuable sources that were published several decades ago, as well as sources published more recently. In this example, the date of the sources matters far less than in our first example. In this last example, imagine you are researching the effect of social media on teenage girls' self-esteem. You would most likely want to focus your results on the last five years since social media and teens' use of social media is constantly changing, and sources published more than five years ago may be considered outdated. The appropriateness of a source's date will always be different depending on your information needs and the assignment guidelines. Also, don't forget that all databases have filters that allow you to narrow by publication date. Another aspect of evaluation to consider is relevance. This category looks at both the subject matter of the resource and if it is written at an appropriate level. Determining if a source is on your subject matter is straightforward. The trickier aspect of relevance is to decide whether it is at an appropriate level. For example, let's say you are researching shipwrecks on the Great Lakes. You find two different ebooks. While well, both sources are relevant because they talk about shipwrecks on the Great Lakes, the ebook called Stories from the Wreckage A Great Lakes Maritime History Inspired by Shipwrecks is more relevant to your research because it is written at an appropriate level for your research paper. We know this because if we compare the information about the books, and look at the subjects, you will notice some differences. In multiple places, Great Ships on Great Lakes, a Maritime History, lists that this is a juvenile book. Whereas, Stories from the Wreckage does not include this language. Looking for books without the subject juvenile is a good first step to determine if a book is written at the right level for your research. When looking at books, you need to consider a few more aspects to determine if it's written at an appropriate level, such as language used, presence of citations, and publisher. Journal articles are easier to determine relevance. For example, if the article is peer-reviewed, it means it is an academic journal article, except in rare cases, most journal articles will be written at an appropriate level and therefore relevant to your topic. The next step in evaluation we are going to examine is the idea of authority. Information sources reflect their creator's expertise and credibility and are evaluated based on the information needs and the context in which you are using the information. There are several different ways someone can earn authority. For example, they could have an advanced degree like a medical doctor or a researcher with a PhD. They could have authority based on their position, for example, a politician. Authority could also be earned based on personal experiences, such as a chef who has worked in the industry for many years. Different contexts will require different types of authority. For example, within your church community, your pastor is considered an authority figure. However, you wouldn't want to cite your pastor as a source in an academic paper because your pastor is not an authoritative source within the context of academia. Depending on your information needs, you will require different levels of authority. However, in university, most papers will require the authority granted by higher level degrees. Not all scholarly sources will indicate a scholar's authority within the article or book, so evaluating sources with the other crap elements is essential. 
Accuracy is another important aspect of evaluation and refers to whether the information is verifiable or correct. There are several different methods for determining if a source is accurate. First, see if a source is supported by evidence, such as citations or original research studies. This article has numerous citations to research, and they conducted original research to support the claims they made. So we can say with reasonable confidence that this article is accurate. Scholarly sources will always be supported by evidence that includes citations and a reference list. Depending on the discipline, they will also include original research and explanations about the methods they use to conduct the research. A second technique to determine the accuracy is to determine if the article is peer-reviewed. This will only work with articles, as books do not undergo a peer-review process. If an article has gone through the peer-review process, there is a higher chance that the article is accurate, and this is one of the reasons the peer-review process is so highly regarded in academia. Many databases will have filters that allow you to narrow your results to peer-reviewed materials. If you can verify the article you're looking at is peer-reviewed, it is likely accurate. The above resource is peer-reviewed. We know this because when we search for the article in the library search and add the peer-reviewed filter, it is still within the search results. Since the article we looked at is both supported by evidence and peer-reviewed, it is very accurate. Books do not go through the same peer review process. However, academic book publishing includes an editorial review process that is very rigorous and these books are still considered scholarly. Another strategy to determine accuracy is to verify the information with another source. For example, this website source is highly inaccurate. For example, in the source it lists that Christopher Columbus was born in 1951 when he was actually born in 1451. Many other sources online refute all the information published on this website. The last element to consider when evaluating sources is the purpose. This refers to why the author wrote the source you are examining. Some purposes include informing, persuading, preaching to the choir, providing an overview, or generating controversy. In academia, the sources used most are scholarly or peer-reviewed sources. The purpose of these sources is to inform the academic community about new research within specific disciplines. These sources are generally free of overt, political, ideological, cultural, religious, institutional, or personal biases. Let's take a look at two different sources with vastly different purposes. This first source is from Fox News, and the purpose is to persuade people that climate change does not affect hurricanes. Further, it is full of biases and language that is overly emotional, such as environmental extremists, radical greens, and ideological jihad. This language, along with a lack of citations and the cherry-picking of facts, is the type of source you'd want to avoid when writing papers. The second source is from a peer-reviewed journal article, and the purpose of the paper is to inform other researchers about a study on the effect of climate change on hurricanes. There is no overt bias and there are numerous citations. In academia, when researching, you want sources that resemble the second source. The idea of credibility indicates the degree of trust that researchers give to the source or the source's value. Different types of sources have different levels of value, while resources such as blog posts, websites, and tweets may contain reliable information, they aren't considered credible sources in an academic environment. By using the CRAAP test, you can ensure that the information you are using in your research is reliable, trustworthy, and relevant to your topic. While you don't need to evaluate every source with the CRAAP method, it is a good idea to think critically about the sources you use in a paper, especially if a professor has specified that you can only use peer-reviewed or scholarly sources. Thank you for watching. Remember, you can always ask us for help.